June is Elder Abuse Awareness Month, and according to the CDC, around 1 in 10 older adults here in the U.S. suffer from elder abuse. So what should you do? What should you look for if you suspect a loved one is suffering from elder abuse? Joining me now is Stephen Michaud, investigative journalist and author of Robert's Story, A Texas Cowboy's Troubled Life and Horrifying Death, and of course, Houston criminal defense attorney Dick DeGarren. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you both Good for morning. coming in. Great to be here. This morning we're talking about elder abuse, and this mm -hmm. is a very heavy, heavy topic. You bet. Where, what, what do you want people to know this morning? Where do we begin this conversation? Well, it's many-sided, and there's not one single solution for it. You have a large elder population in this country, and they're... Uh, the the abuse spreads as as their numbers spread and there's not really any effective policing uh, outside of family members or friends there's no there's there's no uh, elderly police in this country mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you will mm -hmm. and no and and no central uh, uh, data collecting area so you can really get your hands on how big a problem it is except Everybody agrees it's a huge problem and is growing. And sometimes, you know, people who are um, up there in age, who are elderly, they don't have the communicative skills or abilities to to talk to people, to reach out for help if if they're faced in a, in a situation like that. They don't have the faculties. That's true. And also, w with their age is the fact that they are kept out of sight. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first things that happens to the elderly is that they're sequestered mm -hmm. um, and and people uh, that's a really great point yeah is that uh, people don't see them and they don't have a way to reach out another important point is apparently uh, they are distributed disproportionately among the poor uh, and 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 not the middle class and not mm -hmm. the rich it's it's poor families that for various reasons uh, are trying to uh, neutralize or get rid of their elderly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and of course, with growing older comes so many different elements, whether that be frustration or, or uh, constraints on, on sure. families at times. Talk to us, before we move on to Dick, uh, talk to us about the ties uh, elder abuse has with Robert's story. Well, Robert was a very wealthy Texas rancher from an old, old family, uh, and about three-fourths of the way through his career, an enormous ocean of gas uh, was discovered on his ranch, mm. and he went from being a rich to being a super-rich Texas rancher, but at the same time was isolated, there due in part to problems with other members of his family, part in because he was kind of an irascible old geezer anyway. <laughs> um, but what the net effect was it, is it exposed him to people who were interested in his several hundred millions of dollars of course, and yeah. the fact that it was unprotected and that Robert didn't ever really realize how much money he had. He was not, uh, he was not sophisticated and he had no allies. He, was, he had almost purposefully kept himself apart and then it was just, it was a small move from being apart to being kept apart mm. and then gradually having all of his uh, estate documents rewritten. So by the time he died, he didn't own anything. Mm. Heartbreaking. Yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars, soon gone. How old was he? He died at 87. 87. Yeah. 87 years old. I know, Dick, you have a, a connection to Robert. Well, yeah, I was asked to, to step in it was really too late by his cousin. Um, now, Robert East was a, an heir uh, or a descendant of uh, Richard King, the, the uh, owner, the founder of the King Ranch. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's, but he only wanted to be a cowboy. He was, yeah. uh, uh, as I've said, puro va vaquero. And uh, he was very unsophisticated. And those who around him, uh, were able to take advantage of him mm. because of his lack of sophistication. And basically, he was murdered by those who failed to take proper care of him. There was a quack doctor that was treating him. There were people around him that wanted his cattle and his land and his money. Yeah. Did, they, did he have any family? 
Did he have any? Yes, he did have family. But were he they was, part of this? No, uh, no, they were estranged. Uh, uh, and yeah. in fact, his family wanted us, uh, myself and Ed Hennessy, another lawyer here in Houston, to step in and try to try to help with a guardianship. Yeah, of course. Uh, getting the courts to step in, but uh, at that point, it was ba it basically too late. That's, that is truly heartbreaking. What do you want people to know watching right now, whether it's they are being faced with elder abuse or if this is something that they can prevent, they can get their ducks in order, if you will, in hopes of this not happening to them? Hopefully there is either family or friends around them that will take care of them rather than take advantage of them. And that's uh, the, uh, un, nobody else yeah. will know about the situation yeah. Yeah. unless it's family or friends. Yeah. I'll tell you one quick story. In Robert's case, it was kept a secret until a young Mexican boy who had been hired to take care of him as his caretaker started audio taping what he was hearing and seeing and made it available to people. And suddenly there was physical evidence of what was happening to Robert. Was he targeted, this young man? No, no. no. He, was, they, he was essentially uh, a piece of furniture to everybody there. He just you know, took care of the old man, right? Yeah. And so he was able to, to secretly audio tape what was going on, conversations among the conspirators, yeah. uh, what happened to Robert, what, you know, how he was being treated. Um, unfortunately, that's not probably practical for most families to have somebody in there quietly, secretly t videotaping things. But it underscores an important point is that the the important first step is isolating them. Yeah. Once these people are isolated, they have nothing, they have no way of asserting themselves uh, at all and no way of communicating. And that can be done intentionally on, on, on those who are supposed to be there to love and care for these sure. people. They can do that intentionally. Yeah, that's access. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they see, they see an older couple or an older individual with control of resources, uh, and and uh, they want them and they take them. You know, I think this is twofold. Having grown up with, like I was saying earlier during break, with my great grandparents, I, I have a very special s spot in my heart for elderly yeah. folks. But I think this is twofold. Like prophylactically speaking, you know, you can obviously show up with heart and, and care and respect for these people. But there are legal things that you can do, right, in order to or in hopes of preventing this from happening? That's correct. That's what a guardianship is all about. Yeah. But you have to make sure that the whoever is appointed the guardian uh, has uh, the best interest, interest of yeah. the, the ward at heart uh, rather than taking advantage. And so what happened with Robert East was uh, he didn't have anybody that yeah. was taking care of him. And sadly, so many older folks are, are you know, have that similar story. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, for people wanting to learn more about the book or purchase the book, how can they go about doing so? Well, of course, there's always uh, uh, mail order and, and going to the bookstores. And if you're in Houston, uh, Friday night, there's a book signing. Uh, you this Friday. Can, this yeah. Friday, yeah. Thursday. Night. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, night. Thursday night, yeah. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Is, yeah, right here. Thursday, June 29th. At Brazos Bookstore. Yeah. Awesome.